Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I am finishing my hashtag make that look 2020 dress. Now, um, if you saw my video from a couple days ago and I'm gonna post that here or there or somewhere, um, you'll see the first part of the process and today I'm actually doing the sewing. Now, if you have a question about what I'm wearing today, this is actually a thrifted dress. This is not um, me made. Um, I thrifted this. I thrifted this at a fabulous thrift store in, in Barcelona called Umana. It's a whole chain and they have every once in a while a one euro day. And so I got this for one euro. Yeah. Anywho, so far today I have pinned and marked my darts. Um, the other thing I did was I took this mount out of the, the arm side because I felt like it was gonna be like kind of here and I wanted it to be more there. So I, t I just took out about a centimeter and a half and then I took the piece that I took out of, the f out of the front portion and I put that up against the back portion so that they would be equal and approximately the same shape so that the arm seam or the shoulder seams would still match. So I've done that and I've also written out the order in which I wanna put this garment together because again, the instructions are in Russian. I have gone over them. I also looked at the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges dress instructions because it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of similarities. And then I wrote it for myself what order I wanna do things in because for instance, I wanna finish the armhole seams and do the bias binding before I do the side seams. And I wanna to remember to do that. And sometimes I just kinda of get going and then stop thinking about things. Um, when I wanna put the pockets on, all that kind of stuff. So I've written out for myself the order that I wanna do things in that I think will make the most sense for me. So here we go. Okay, so I've done all the darts. There were one, two, three, four, five, six sets of darts. And uh, so they've done really pretty. This fabric is gorgeous and it presses beautifully. One little tip is I use a couch decorative pillow when I am, oops, when I am pressing out darts or anything rounded like that. I don't have a ham with me. It's not really something that I feel the need to buy right now. And I just feel like a couch cushion has just enough curve to give you, now if you were doing something, and actually if I need something a little bit more, like a larger curve, I just use the corner of the couch cushion and it has just enough support um, and I always have a couch cushion around. So that's what I use. I've also pressed the pockets and the pocket flaps. Um, I noticed in the picture that the pockets are rectangular, not curved at the bottom. Um, and that's fine because pressing out those curves is irritating. So I just made these flat and I have to do two more pocket covers for the top half. I have to cut those out of the different fabric. So I'm gonna get on that and then I can um, start putting the pockets on the front of the dress. So that's exciting. All right, I just got back from the Merceria and I got this buckle for the self belt, which I love. I think that's perfect. And then I got these buttons. It's funny, I keep calling it the red dress, but the original is red. This is really more brown. <laughs> Um, and when I tried to put red buttons on it, that became even more apparent. So we've got this, which I think is going to work really nicely. Yay. All right. So here is the progress I have made so far today, which I am quite pleased with. I think it's going to look really beautiful. Let's just hope it fits. Um, okay. So from the top, I have attached the facing to the back piece, but I haven't understitched it yet or pressed it. I've turned in the facings and attached them on the tops. I think that's gonna look really pretty. This pocket is done. That's finished. For some reason, the pocket, the tops of the pockets were too wide once I got this on, so I had to cut this one down and now I'm in the process of cutting this one down. And then the lower half, I've done all the darts and that's pretty much it to the bottom half. I've also cut and placed these. And then for the back of these, I have this pretty fabric, which I thought was really nice. So those will do that. And they look pretty much the exact right size. So very pleased with those. So that's where we are. And this fabric is just dreamy. Like 
it's just like high end boutique feeling fabric. Like that's the only way I can describe it. It's like not just beautiful fabric, but it feels like this is a dress from a boutique. That's like what the feeling of this fabric is. So even though it was an investment, I have to say it was highly, highly worth it. All right, that's it for now. Okay, so more progress has been made. Let me show you what I'm working on. First of all, I just showed you this. Looking now at the um, at the original, I think maybe this is too small. I feel like it probably should have been another half an inch bigger, but I've already cut the belt and I already have this, so it's just gonna be what it'll be. Um, on the top now, I have got all the pockets, top and bottom actually, I'm gonna hang this up in a minute and show it to you, but um, the pockets are on, they feel great. It's so beautiful and drapey, this fabric. And I, the other thing I wanted to do before I put it together was do the bias binding on the armholes because I really um, don't like doing it after the fact. So it's pretty good. It's maybe a teeny, teeny bit rumply. I'll probably just press it a bunch more. But I wanted to show you that I got these. I can't remember if I showed these to you. I got these um, maybe about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. They just happened to have them there. And I'd actually been looking at them on Amazon and they're really expensive. But I got these for, I think they were maybe 10, 10 or 11 euros. And these are, if you haven't seen these before, these are called duckbill scissors. And what they do is they allow you to trim seams without worrying about cutting your under the fabric underneath. So it kind of separates the two, if you're grading seams, or in this case, what I'm doing is I'm cutting down the inside. So I put, I've put the, ah, hang on, here we go. I put the bias binding on, but now I wanna trim all this away. And so I'll show you in a second, but it basically allows me to kind of get under there and not worry that I'm going to cut this fabric underneath. Just smooths and streamlines the process quite a bit. I'll show you. Okay, so here we are. I've just hung it up in the hallway to kind of see how it looks. Do you ever make something and go, oh, if I didn't have to worry about this fitting me, like if I just had to make it look pretty and that was it. <laughs> um, for some reason, these two pockets, tops, turned out a little differently. I, I just don't think I'm gonna bother doing anything about that. I'm just gonna have to deal. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there. Although now it's really, now that I've seen it, it's starting to irritate me. Oh, it'd be a lot of unpicking to undo that and take the whole thing off and redo it. I don't know. The darts line up. Um, yeah. Seems like the back is shorter than the front, although maybe it's just how I pinned it. So what I have to do now is I have to, I wanna give it a little try on. I have done the side seams, but I haven't attached top to bottom. Part of me wonders if I wanna add a waistband, although I don't have enough fabric for that. I'm a little worried that the um, bodice is a little too short. Oh, now that pocket top is gonna bother me. Darn it, it's so frustrating because I don't have more fabric to, to recut it. So I've gotta maneuver, manipulate what I already have. Oh, can I get over it? Can I get over it? Can I get over it? I don't know, stay tuned. Okay, so I decided to give it a try on before I attach the top to the bottom. And, Okay, so I decided to try it on before attaching the top to the bottom. And it's okay. It's not too small, which is the harder thing to fix. Um, I'm not loving these armholes. I cut them out in a bit, but I think I need to do it more. Sorry for the sun, there's a skylight. I can't do anything about it. 
So I think I want to actually open up the side seam and fold this in. Or I might need to to recut it. But then the arm the pockets go so far out that I can't. Maybe I just have to live with it. Maybe I just have to live with it. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It just, like I almost just want this to go here. Maybe I just cut this part. Then I've got to rebind the armholes, which is so not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> but yeah, it almost needs to like, Come to there. I can't really decide. I can't really decide if it's totally fine and I'm just being mm, overly critical. I mean, maybe it's taking a little bit out of here. Maybe that's what it is. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm going to attach the top to the bottom because I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And actually the bodice is in an okay place. So that's good. I do like my little peekaboo pockets. The pockets are good other than that thing that I'm just gonna choose to ignore for the moment until it really bothers me. And then I have to decide how I feel about these shoulders. Okay, so I took this stuff away, which is always a good thing because it kind of gives you a little perspective. One thing I have to do is I need to open up the seam because these darts are misaligned. And even though there's a belt that's gonna go across them, I think it's an easy fix. So I'm gonna do that. Up here, I tried it on inside out and I pinched a little bit of fabric out of this shoulder seam. It could be that I have um, like a sloping shoulder or it could just be the cut of the dress because it was originally had these, not sleeves, but like kind of big cuffs. And it might just be how it was drafted because I haven't really had that problem before. So I'm going to baste that and see how it looks. And I'm gonna redo that one portion of the waist. And then I can, I think, start to do the buttonholes. I want to do the buttons and the buttonholes before I do the hem to see the final length, but, but we're getting there. I got a little frustrated there. I don't know if you could tell. <laughs> I got a little frustrated. Um, I just love this fabric so much. I want to do it justice. And, you know, the, the original dress is so beautiful. And again, I wanted to kind of live up to that. So. I still have hope that it's gonna look great. Okay, so hopefully you can tell which shoulder has been fixed. Wait, let me close this. Okay, so hopefully you can tell which shoulder has been fixed. Can you tell? It's this one. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Um, and it, I think it is, See, there's a lot of extra fabric here, and that's this fits better here. It's coming down the side. It'll even be flatter when I take out this fabric and press it, because I actually haven't pressed it yet. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's the ticket. So I'm gonna do that same thing to the other side. And then I'm gonna do the buttonholes. Um, I have to finish up the belt. And then the length, it's actually longer than I thought, which I'm okay with. It's right now it's knee length. If I do a nice double hem, it'll be, um, you know, just a little bit above the knee. And I kind of wanted it to be a mini dress, not as mini as in the picture, but a mini dress. So yeah, so I'm happier. I have just broken not one, but two needles sewing on buttons, two two on the same button.
I had done one, two, three, I did four buttons, no problem. Fifth button, two needles. This is not a good ratio. Okay, I finished the buttons and I sewed the waistband button on by hand because the fabric was really thick and I, I couldn't get the button under and keep it in the right placement. So now I try it on for the first time. Everyone cross fingers and toes. Here we go. Did I mention I finished the belt as well? Belt done. Okay. First try on. Perhaps not the most flattering thing I've ever put on. These are too far out, I think. Which means I either, I'm considering tacking them down because I'm never putting anything in those, which could maybe bring them where they need to go. I do like up here, this is much better. Um, I might take in the sides a bit, although it's so nice and cool like this, I don't know. And then here's the belt. Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence. Maybe I need to undo this. Or even this. Woo woo. There we go. I think it's better a little breezier. And I have to move this button down a bit because it's pulling. Other than that, I'm just gonna do the hem and then we'll shush it up a bit and see what we think. All right, so in the end, I decided to leave the dress as is. Now, I did fix the front dart that was off by like a quarter of a centimeter. <laughs> I fixed that. And I do plan to adjust the pockets in the front by raising up the pocket flap on one side, um, which again is probably only something I would notice, but it does get on my nerves. <laughs> so I'll put in a video now of me wearing it out to lunch. And I decided to wear it before making any changes to it. And what I found was it is just so lovely and breezy. And you know breezy is basically next to comfortable is my favorite word when it comes to clothes, especially in the summer. And it's so hot right now. And I don't wanna make it slimmer at the moment because then it will just cling to my body and I know that I won't wear it as much. So I didn't even wear the belt, you'll notice, while I was out because um, I wanted to feel how it moves. And this fabric is just so dreamy. It, it, it is not sponsored. This I paid for the fabric. I will buy it again. It is. It feels like fabric from a high-end boutique. So, which is probably an extra reason why I wanted the dress to look like it was from a high-end boutique as well. I don't think I quite got there. There's too many, um, there's too many things that are not quite right about it. However, I really like the dress a lot. I really think I will wear it a lot. Um, I may in the future adjust the sleeves or uh, the, the arm side. I might, but for the moment, I think it's best just to leave it and enjoy it and wear it and wash it and see what happens because once I cut into that arm side, there's no going back and I don't want to ruin it because I love this fabric so much. So I love my little peekaboo pocket. I love um, my buttons down the front and I'm also gonna take up the hem. I am gonna do that. I think I'm gonna take up the hem like probably by about like two, maybe even three inches, make it a little more sassy. Um, but like I said, after wearing it, I'm much happier. Okay, so that is my saga with the Bondi dress that I made from a Berta pattern out of meter meter fabric. And uh, I hope that you enjoyed watching my process. And I will, uh, the other pattern, the other Berta pattern, I am gonna make, but not in time for the end of the um, challenge because this just took me a bit longer than I anticipated. And I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. I'm really enjoying slow sewing lately. And so um, I'm enjoying taking my time. And I've even found in the last week or so that I've maybe two weeks since things have started to open up that I'm starting to go fast, fast, fast again. And this was a good reminder that slower is better. 
Okay, I will be back uh, on the 8th to announce the winners of the challenge. There's still time. You've got, well, from now, you've got basically two days. You've got until I wake up on July 8th. So <laughs> go until as late as you can on the 7th, and then I will choose the winners from Instagram and my email if some have email entries, and I will announce them on the 8th. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.